I heard something the other day. Children are people. This is an obvious statement of truth. Oddly, in our current American context, saying that person over there in regard to a little girl at the park, or saying he's a person with his own thoughts and needs and feelings about a four-year-old boy sitting in the back seat of a car, it feels a bit stilted. It sounds like something a foreigner would say after learning basic conversational English but they're not yet aware of the peculiarities in the language, the diminutives, the formalities, the colloquialisms. Children being people operate under the same rules that we do. And by we, I mean all the human beings that are not children. During one of my treatment sessions, a parent said to me, that she did not understand why her child was not yet talking. I know what he wants, she said. I can understand him. She went on to describe a seemingly idyllic situation. A happy baby with loving parents. Him wanting for nothing. A boy who was a quick learner, keen ears, understanding all the words of the adults around him. Now the perceptive may already sense the present peril in the development of this child. Why? why why does one man speak out amongst a crowd when all others stay silent? Why do some of the silent crowd come round to that man later the same day and tell him, We are with you. Don't back down. You are not alone. Why do some feel the weight of potential, dreadful like the pack of bunions imagining, each deed left undone, a stain, a deliberate sin of sloth? What separates these conditions? Economists and politicians argue over the concept of whether a man will ever learn to fish if he is given one to eat. What is this interminable argument really focusing on? The expression of will can be divided in many ways. A simple yet still true method is to draw a line between the internal and the external. All people experience this reality in their lives, including the subgroup of people known as children. I give him everything he wants, his mother had said. But what does this scenario do to a person that has a low internal drive to speak? When all pressures to overcome are removed from the environment, but the internal cistern of motivation runs dry, what happens to that person? Does stagnation occur naturally, or is it made to occur? What role does our external reality play in shaping us, growing us, improving us? Obviously, some people do learn to climb mountains that they've never had to cross for the sake of survival. The local rock climbing gym is evidence of this in a sweaty, talk dusted, pointy shoed form. At this point, one might be tempted to conclude that a person with internal motivation is superior to a person without. One simple question dispels this incorrect conclusion. Do we care about the growth rightly? Many children greatly desire to be understood, to voice their internal thoughts, and yet they cannot. Their estate is one with distinction, but no difference to the child mentioned earlier. The line of thought explored thus far is an uncomfortable direction for all of us to go in. And by us, I mean people, both children and non-children. Are there any internal factors that would be an improvement but are lacking universally. 
Are there any external factors that would be beneficial to us, and yet they are not present for anyone? Are we capable of knowing our internal needs, our external needs? What if the ability to identify our internal lack is dependent on internal realities? We know that to an extent all people are dependent on the external for growth. How far does that dependency reach? Children are people and operate under a certain set of rules. We being people too operate under the same set of rules. <laughs> 